Right. Jamie, Jamie, you good? All right. All right. I would like to call to order the City of Saugatuck City Council meeting of January 23rd, 2023. Would you please join me? Oh, yes. Would you yes. please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Would the clerk please call the roll? Alquin? Here. Dean? Here. Gardner? Here. Leo? Here. Lewis? Here. Muncie? Here. Sam? Here. Very good. All in attendance. Uh, item four, uh, Mayor's comments. My comment will be you will notice some changes to this agenda. This is a new um, agenda format that the council approved at, a, at an earlier city council meeting. It's a bit of a work in progress, so hopefully it will keep things moving quickly and also uh, give a nod to some of the folks that have to commute to uh, speak and, and provide public comment. And hopefully it will allow you to get home to your families a little bit sooner. Uh, but obviously a work in progress and uh, always open for suggestions on how we can improve our process. So with that, I'll turn it over to the manager to see if he has any comments he'd like to share. Mr. Mayor, my uh, manager report is on page 12. Wonderful. Um, you'll see that there. I, I will mention that I had a wonderful dinner with the Mount Baldhead group. Awesome, awesome conversation. Um, you know, I don't like to call them nerds, <laughs> <laughs> but they kind of are. We're nerds. <laughs> <laughs> and so it was a, it was a great dinner, um, it, 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 a wonderful thing. So, um, and then also I just want to highlight on my manager report that the Municipal League has um, selected me as a committee member to be an advocate for the city manager form of government. So I just, I can highlight that again when I get back to it, but it's on page 13 of the report. Mm -hmm. Wonderful, great news, great. Um, with that, I will move to item six, uh, agenda changes. Um, I would like to pr propose one of agenda change. Uh, Dean Capica, our uh, Allegan County Commissioner is here, and I would like to, uh, suggest we move him to 7A for guest speaker. Kristen, I hope you're okay with that. Uh, Dean's here in person and has to commute, so you're home. So if you don't mind moving to B, uh, we'd be grateful. And are there any other uh, suggested agenda changes? Uh, I think that would be a voice vote. Yes. All in favor of the agenda changes as, oh, well, go I'm, ahead, Jamie. Yeah. Second. Oh, sorry, motion and second. Mayor, I move to approve agenda changes as proposed. Uh, second. Have, Motion Gardner, second Stanton. Uh, all in favor, please say yes. 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 Good catch, clerk. <laughs> Thank you, Jamie. So with that, uh, that takes us to our guest guest speakers. And um, I believe our first one is our county commissioner, Dean Capping up. Happy New Year and welcome. So happy New Year, everybody. And I'll first just make the comment of Mom Baldy, I was with my grandkid just two days ago. Going to the taco, and is this a blessing or what? <laughs> <laughs> you know, they go up the and we do the trail along the, I mean, as far as the Sagadak Trail all the time, and it's just so cool. But first of all, I'm just very thankful to be your commissioner and would like you to know that my job really is to give a report to you. But more than that, I should be somebody who, when you call, sorry, if you would say, boy, we've got this water project, which I've talked to you before, or we have this going. You should be able to call your commissioner and you should be get a reaction from me going, what do you need? I'll jump on it. Or Dean, I heard this going on with the county. Can you, can you come and speak to our group? I will jump at it. So just know I'm supposed to be your advocate. I will be your advocate. That's what my job is. So I'd enjoy doing that. I want to support what you do. This is my area. And I'm there to do that. Just to give you just a small report on what we have going, this time of year is something which I'm sure you're doing and we're doing. We're trying to figure out what should we, we be doing for the next two to five years? So um, something that was interest, interesting to me in the last week, I was at two different committees. I was at 901 Policy Board and they gave us these stats. They had 47,000 um, law enforcement calls this past year, 13,000 EMS calls, 8,000 fire department calls. It's been raising about 3,000 calls a year for the last really five years. And then I went through, um, like you give a millage of about $2.6 million to the seniors in Allegan County to help the seniors. So this past week, I was at a committee meeting 
And we had probably about 90,000 meals being given to seniors mm -hmm. all over the place. We had about 450 seniors that are just getting respite help. They need baths. They need something to clean their house because they don't have kids around here. And we had all those reports of the help that they're giving those people and how they just don't have anyone there to even see them. You know, I was going, wow, is this thing awesome to think of that's being done. But then um, as I was going through a survey just today, because what we do is we send a survey out to the people and we say, people, what do you think? Instead of having Dean Capping say, I know what the people need. I don't really don't know what they need. The people give us a survey and they say, boy, to have the betterment of life, to be able to raise a family like I'd like in a safe place, I think that I want to have safety from law enforcement. And you're doing that here really well. I want to make sure that we have water, that we have broadband, that we have EMS, you know, that we have schools that we can go to. And it's all safe for our kids to do all those things. So they give this list. And then we try to match up our list with our strategic planning. So does it really match up to what they're saying? We can't go, this is, we're a representative of the people. So today I was just going over it going, wait a second. They want um, safety to raise a family in a safe place, but calls are going up 3000 a year. Do we have enough law enforcement there? Um, the governor just agreed to give us another judge um, last day of the year, last year. So we're, we're in the midst of building that whole facility as far as what's it take to do that? You know, but um, just so you know, the we, our group works on trying to real make sure we hit ourselves all the time. We are a voice of the people. What do the people want? And then to make sure that we're fiscally sound and how we're doing it, looking out far enough to go, wait a second, do we have the finance to do it? And something that we trip ourselves up all the time is we have great ideas, let's do this and this. We don't have the staff to complete it. <laughs> we overload them all the time. You know, so we're trying to be fiscally sound with your money. I'm trying to look out far enough to go, what are the people's needs? Let's hit on them. I think we are. This broadband thing is huge. You know, we just hired 123.net. Um, we're giving them $17.7 million. We believe it's going to be a $70 million project. We think we're getting money from the state to finish that. You know, as far as we have a water project going on for the aquifer underneath you that we suck a lot of money into, I think that we're close to um, getting the cities and townships together to say, you want to spend the money for a computer system that will actually be able to show you the aquifers here by putting in a subdivision of 70 houses, it will draw this much, it can handle it or it can't. You know, something like that. And the purity of it is this. So we have test wells that we've put in this past year to determine that. And I think we're trying to look at the big picture. I'm sure we miss it. I think one of our strengths are we realize that we don't know everything. Um, we have to, wisdom is listening to you, citizens, to each other to get the best answer. But Dean, thanks for letting me speak. Absolutely. And look forward to talking to you more. Mayor. Absolutely. Mayor. Go ahead. Uh, I know you this some of these folks may not know your district expanded quite a bit. A ton. Yeah. I mean, so what happened was we were we were disappointed in this. Um, we're the third fastest growing county in the state of Michigan. So our numbers are just jumping. And um my area now is Manlius, Saugatuck, Ganges, Clyde, Casco, Lee, and Cheshire. So I go to South Haven all the way to South Haven, then I go all the way east past Pullman. Mm -hmm. So I'm on nine different committees. I'm on two out of this, out of Lansing. I chair four out of the nine. And then I have that responsibility of really trying to um, do what I should do within all those townships and cities. So I have three cities and I have seven townships. So it is huge. It's way too huge. <laughs> I want to appreciate the work you're doing. I'm trying real hard. And I do want to be what you need me to be, you know, so um, make sure you, you feel free to call me. Any, any other questions for Dean or and nothing? Thank, Thank you. you for coming all this way. For, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're very happy about that. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Dean. Thank Safe you. travels back. Please. Yeah. Um, that takes us to guest speaker uh, B, uh, Kristen Armstrong, Saugatuck Center for Arts Executive Director. Over to you, Kristen. Hey, thank you. And thanks for letting me do this via Zoom. I appreciate it. I'm home in a fiberglass cast with foot surgery. I would love to be with you. I can't wait to walk up those stairs again. Uh, but tonight we're doing it via Zoom. So do you, my dear, want to share, somebody was going to share, Jamie, maybe share screen. So I have a essentially a PowerPoint presentation that I'll speak over. 
Yes, I shared. It's it's available if you want to pull it out. Awesome. Okay, here we go. Thank you. Um, all right. So thank you for this time this evening. I would, I wanted to be here to let all of you know what's happening at the art center throughout the year. So one, you can be in the loop, in the know. And if there are things you have questions or concerns about or opportunities um, that you might see for partnership, you can know what's on tap and be able to think about that. Um, and also because you're all such great ambassadors um, for the art center, whether it's locally or talking with friends in town. So honestly, you're all influencers uh, who I want to know about this so you can share it too. So I'm going to start at the beginning to say our programming theme for this year is Rooted. Last year, our theme was growth, and now we've transitioned to Rooted. Um, that obviously doesn't necessarily go over our theater productions, but really that's kind of at the hub of what we're doing for our education for um, adults and children and also for exhibitions. And that leads right into, I'm thrilled to tell you that our 2023 Creative Fellow this year is Mindy Trafman, who many of you know. Uh, Mindy's a chef. She's a level three sommelier, and she's going to be spending the entire year with us um, creating culinary experiences um, at events in unexpected ways. So we stitch her together with the visual artists who come for all of our exhibitions. Um, she has opportunities to teach adults. She has opportunities to teach children and just really mix it up. And as she puts it, do things they would never let her do in a restaurant. Uh, and in fact, uh, Thursday night this week is her first big thing at the SCA, and it's the first of um, three dinners she'll do this year called Gather in the Gallery. So for each of our exhibition artists, we have a long table set up in the gallery. The artist there is there. We're surrounded by all the artwork, and Mindy is creating amazing small plates inspired by the artwork that people are sitting with. There'll be wine and beverages and food and some really beautiful conversation. Um, and because we've got Mindy, we can do really cool things like that. And there are three more coming this year, one for Ruth Crow, one for our summer exhibition artist, and one for our fall exhibition artist. So lots going on, and that's Mindy this year. Um, and I just said Ruth. So uh, we are just closing our Fertile Futures exhibition with Molly um, Costello, and up next is the amazing Ruth Crow. Many of you know Ruth. Um, it is the fabulous journal project, which opens in February, runs through May. Um, the journal project is quite literally showcasing um, journals that Ruth has been keeping personally for about 40 years. The exhibition not only includes Ruth's actual journals, um, but artwork that she's created. She's pulled out some of the most poignant and sort of share stories that are many of stories that we all type share um, and created artwork around them. There's a curated playlist you can listen to when you go through the show itself too. Um, and the public opening for that is coming up uh, February 10th. And there's a whole series of adult programming, um, visiting artist programming where Ruth will be teaching at three different high schools, um, five class sessions in three different high schools, talking with kids about storytelling, journaling, their own personal stories. Um, and then it ends up in May with a concert we'll talk about in a little bit. So that's the big bundle. Ruth will also be the visiting artist while we have um, our film festival. And in fact, I wonder if that's the next slide. There we go. So Mountain Film on Tour, which we has been our film festival that we've done for five or six years now, we're, we're adding a tweak. We're calling it Art Out Loud featuring Mountain Film on Tour. Um, and we made that switch because we have so much happening um, that day, especially at the film festival. Um, as you know, that film festival product spills over kind of into three separate things. The first is the Children's Film Festival, and you can see the dates there. We offer that for free to educational partners, gosh, all over West Michigan. Some schools come to the SCA. We go out to some schools like Allegan schools. We go actually to Allegan and screen there in their performing arts center. And we also have a virtual opportunity. So classrooms that would prefer to screen it in their classrooms virtually, that's an option too. Teachers um, sign up online. We have a whole slew of people who will be thousands actually of kids who will be participating. So that runs in mid-March. And then our Film for Families Day, which is a Saturday, and we curate a list of film age appropriate and do some really cool hands-on um, activities. So for families that are focused Focus that way. And the community festival, two days. So Friday night, which is the 24th of March, we're working with a couple of other organizations to do out at Sagatuck Dune State Park, a lantern lit trail hike. 
I don't know why we've never had one in the area before, but we should because Traverse City and all kinds of other places do. So um, it will be the type of lanterns that you can make and carry on the trail yourself. We'll also have things out there appropriately. We're working with um, Michigan State, um, the, the group, I shouldn't say Michigan State, the group that runs um, the state park itself so that we're obviously complying with all of their um, all their rules and guidelines. But our hope is that this really grows into a, a big Friday night event um, because having an outdoor trail hike in March seems like a really good reason to pull people into town. So that'll be Friday night. And then on Saturday, that's all day film festival at the Art Center, morning screening, afternoon screening, evening screening, after party. And all throughout the day, Ruth Crow will be there. Um, Mindy Traffman will be there doing food things. Um, and then we'll have all the screenings. Rufus Ferguson Trio will be there for the after party where we all get to hang out and have another drink and talk about the films. So that is all day on March 25th. And we have a lot of local businesses that have jumped in to help support and sponsor that and local people and families too. So that's the Film Fest. Next coming up in April, Cowboy Junkies, that show is almost sold out. If you want your tickets, go home and gotta buy them tonight because we're almost done and that show will 100% sell out. So the <laughs> return of concerts is back on at the SCA and we have a very robust concert lineup. Actually, Sunday was the first Hempy Keyboard Series. We had 52 people in the lobby for a really fantastic afternoon performance. There will be three more of those every other Sunday afternoon at two. Next up, this was the concert I mentioned, Rooted in Michigan, 10 artists, one stage. They're going to be doing a phenomenal, what's called a writer's round. It's all female singer songwriters who are from Michigan. And then the 60 minute headline concert uh, by the fabulous May Earlwine, who's never been at the SDA somehow. So we're super excited about that. That's May 6th. That kind of wraps up um, Ruth's show also, also. So that's part of that whole bundle of programming. Tickets are in sale right now for Rooted in Michigan, by the way, too. Then summer markets, as always, we will be doing Tuesday markets again. We will be doing Friday markets again. And we will also, as you'll see later, we'll have our fall markets coming back. What's not on here is we actually have an April artist, a spring market that we started, I think, last year. Um, April is a crazy weather month, but I'll tell you what, vendors come out and do it. So we will um, open up again in Jan or excuse me, in April with that one day spring artist market also. So the markets are all back in the summer. And then summer exhibition, TBA. Uh, we had somebody lined up and he just had to pull out because his mother's very ill, but we're really close to lining up our new person. And that person also will be our visiting artist doing the Growing Young Artists program and working um, with teen groups in the area. So I'll keep you posted about who that ends up being. It won't be somebody doing seven installations in four communities. That was last <laughs> uh, Jump into summer is back um, Friday, June 9th. Um, last year we had 1800 people and we know because we brisk banded everybody because of the bar. So I'm betting we're going to have 2000 people this year. We're bringing in an amazing band, Michigander. Um, the guy's fabulous. So look them up. If you don't know who Michigander is, we'll have an opening act also. Plus our summer exhibition artists will be on site. The exhibition will be open. We'll have make and take. Um, activities for kids and well, really all ages, food trucks, beverages, the whole nine yards. So jump has become an annual free thing. And that will be on Friday, June 9th. Then bam, um, this year <laughs> we are doing two really big musicals. So per our, our new five-year strategic plan, um, our goal is to work back up to pre-COVID um, high capacity sold numbers for tickets, as well as to frankly, just do two big musicals. We, we've typically done a big musical and then the second one's a smaller musical. Well, customers want big musicals. So we're jumping in with both feet this year and we open with Kinky Boots, which is fantastic. Um, Kurt and Mary Beth are in Chicago for auditions this week. Then they're in New York the week after that. Um, the day submissions opened, which means if you're an actor, then you can send in your headshot, your resumes to try to get look to try to get an audition actually the very first day it was open kurt had 800 submissions for kinky oh, boots oh, oh. i mean it's always good news bad news like you're so excited but then you're like oh my god i have to really sift through 3,000 apps submissions or something. So um, this will be phenomenal talent. I mean, we say this every year, but, it, and it, it is, and this will be really phenomenal talent this year for Kinky Boots. It's huge. It's a cast of 24, same, same size as Legally Blonde. So it is a big, big, exciting show. Broadway costume package, the whole nine yards. It'll be awesome. So Kinky Boots, and then 
Uh, oh, one night only. So this is Levi Christ. He is a Tony Award winner. He uh, won the Tony when he was Jerry Lee Lewis uh, in Million Dollar Quartet on Broadway. He just oh. recently was in Hades Town, and he is an incredibly gifted uh, pianist, singer, and so he will be here for one night only in July. That show will 100% sell out. Um, tickets will be on sale shortly here in February, and do not miss it because your friends will all be saying to you, "I can't believe you weren't there. It was phenomenal." We are. So so lucky to have this man coming to town for one night. So that's mm -hmm. Levi Christ in July. Then summer benefit, we're keeping it that first Saturday in August, um, which is great. Um, Blue Star Trail is in June this year. Um, well, is it, they're back in South Haven this year. Um, I think Oxbow is probably still that first Saturday after 4th of July as they've always been. So we're sliding right now still into that first week in August, so August 5th, SCA benefit. And then big second show, Jersey Boys. So finally, the show has come off the national tour. It's been released for regional theaters like us. So hooray, 21 performances. So we're expanding that an extra week. Um, so all, I mean, you know, that is a ridiculous sound. Like every single song in the score is a huge hit. Like you can literally sing along. But don't, but you could. So uh, <laughs> Jersey Boys, so it'll be Kinky Boots and then Jersey Boys with Levi in between and then all the other stuff. So I I really do think it's going to be a spectacular um, theatrical summer in Sagatuck, which is pretty exciting. Then, but wait, there's more. Mm -hmm. uh, exhibition, our exhibition artist this fall is Michael Belmore. He's an Anishinaabe um, artist who lives in Canada and he will be bringing 3D sculptural pieces. Uh, I'm, we will absolutely be doing exhibition, or I should say part programming in partnership with the History Center. Um, likely we'll be working, well, we'll be working a whole series of schools. Michael will also be doing an outdoor installation at the Outdoor Discovery Center along their art trail. We did have an installation last year out there at ODC, and that art trail, really, they blazed um, in partnership with us so that we could continue to help them activate it every year. So Michael will do an outdoor exhibition exhibition out at Outdoor Discovery Center. So that is our fall exhibition. Um, Bright Night is back. That was the silent disco we did. Um, it just went, we didn't, you know, who knew what people would say? They loved it. Not only did they loved it so much, we're going to keep it a silent disco again this year too. People were begging us to do it one more time. So at least for this year again, and as you guys remember, that is the Friday night before the big Douglas Halloween parade. So we did that really deliberately thinking, well, gosh, let's create a one-two punch. Then hopefully people come and stay even an extra night in town. Um, but that, you know, it's an all ages event. You literally can bring your kids and they can have fun or you can come, you know, on a date night or whatever. So that will again be October 27th. Um, what's not in this presentation that I'll just verbally tell you, September, a concert with Marsha Ball, who is a New Orleans based um, singer, pianist. We've had her before. So excited to have her back. She's, it is literally like a party and a keyboard. She's amazing. That will be in September. Then in October, we're doing our first um, tribute band. So it is an Eagles tribute band called Heartache Tonight. And these guys are phenomenal. So it's not a cover band. This is one of those tribute bands. So when you see them, you feel like you're going to see the Eagles. Um, it'll be super fun. That's in October. And tickets will go on sale for that in a couple months too. Then Winter's Eve market is back on November 3rd and the holiday market on December 2nd. Nice. And I, that's it. That's it. Oh, well, that's that's all the, plus all the kids <laughs> programming and everything else. So now that's it. There you go. Kristen, all, all I can say is, wow, um, another blockbuster of a year. Thank you so much for all you do. Um, I'll turn it over to the council if anyone has any questions or comments for Kristen. Mayor. Gregory, please. Uh, I appreciate all the activity there over the winter time, and you helped uh, generate that uh, flow of traffic here in town. Uh, with others here in town during the winter time. And just to let you know, we give you a shout out with all these events. We talked about the Hempy key Keyboard Sir, uh, uh, the uh, dinner with uh, Mindy Trapman, and we enjoy sharing your events on our show at Sagatuck on Sunday at 92.7 The Van. Thank you, Gregory. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Holly. Uh, Kristen, I uh, have to repeat what Scott said, wow. That looks amazing. Um, our Mountain Film uh, Festival tickets on sale yet? Yeah, they are. Yep. If you go to the uh, front page of the website, it's under, I think, entertainment. It's the second one, Art Out, Art Out Loud Community Film Festival. That's SC4, the number four, A.org. <laughs> Great. Anything, um, anything else for Kristen? 
Kristen, one, once again, th thank you for all you and the SCA do. It's it's just such a blessing for our community. So thank you for that. Thanks, Kristen. Thanks. Thank Kristen. you for the time, everyone. I really appreciate it. Great. Uh, we're now at item eight, uh, public comment on agenda items only. Uh, if you could please limit your comments to three minutes, we'd be grateful. And I will open up the floor to the audience that's here in person. Please, and uh, please do approach the podium and state your name and your residence uh, for the record, please. Thank you. Hi, I'm David Langley at Serendipity Bed and Breakfast, um, 203 Griffith Street. Um, I'm also, also with the STABA, but I noticed one of the items on this list is uh, this new business discussion of the short-term rental issue. And so I don't know exactly what particulars you're going to go into, but I, I, um, I can't stick around for that. But what... I hope one of the things you're going to discuss is if there's a way to do what Holland does is limit the number of, of rental units. I don't know if there is or not in Saugatuck. I don't know if that's what you're going to talk about or not, but that would be useful. Um, the other thing is to um, find out if there's a way to have rental units, aside from just bed and breakfast, have rental units all uh, also contribute to the CVB in a monetary fashion because the CVB right now is supported by bed and breakfast pretty much that's it you know and all these all these other short-term rentals they just go in everybody's coattails and they rake in the money and most a lot of them may not even live in town and so when the money that, that they collect in rents, it goes to Grand Rapids or whoever else they are. I mean, there's lots of places like that around. So I don't know if that's what you're going to discuss, but I would suggest looking at that hard. And I know it's an issue that's, I don't know if it can, if it can be done from the state down or if it can be done locally, but it would be really a help. The CVB can use every bit of money they, they can have. I mean, they're the ones that promote the area to advertising and um, and it's it's a it would help be helpful for them to to get uh, funds from everybody that benefits from what with it, from what they do. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you for the comment. Anyone else in the audience? Um, Mark, you're welcome to comment now if you wish, or we can also uh, address a Venetian during a new business. It's it's up to, it's up to you. There, you'll have more time to discuss it under new business if, if you're not in a hurry to go. Okay, wonderful. Do you mind if we hold you hold you till then? Thank you. Okay, wonderful. Um, anyone else in the audience? Um, anyone uh, on the Zoom that would like to offer comment on agenda items only? Jamie, I don't see any hands raised. Okay, with that. Uh, that will close our first public comment period. That will take us to item nine, uh, which is our consent agenda. Uh, we have regular city council meeting minutes from December 12th of 2022. That's on page three. We have special city council meeting minutes of December 13th, 2022 on page six and regular city council meeting minutes, January 9, 2023 on page eight. Uh, do I have a motion to approve the consent agenda? Mayor, so moved. yeah, go ahead. Second. Uh, motion Baldwin, second. Lewis, Lewis sorry. Um, <laughs> we don't even <laughs> remotely look alike. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. Um, any discussion on the consent agenda? I hear no discussion. Uh, we have a motion. So this will be a roll call vote, clerk. So Baldwin? Would you... Yes. Dean? Yes. Gardner? Yes. Leo? Yes. Lewis? Yes. Muncy? Yes. Stan? Yes. Very good. Thank you. We are now at item 10, staff reports, boards, commissions, and committees. Uh, we will start with the staff reports, which begin on page 12. Uh, Ryan, did you want to expand on any highlights of, of your report? Um, I'm very pleased to hear about the news of your, mm -hmm. your appointment to talk to your peers about what you've been doing. And Yeah, and, no, uh, I'm happy to... Um, that I was appointed to that committee as well. Uh, I will just mention that uh, you, Mr. Mayor, will be sending out my evaluation form, which will be coming out very shortly. And so the rest of the council can look forward to having their input and then returning that to you and Mayor Pro Tem for a discussion. Very good, thank you. Great, um, I don't believe we have uh, the treasurer on the line, uh, but we have his report. 
Um, planning and zoning, uh, Ryan, you're here. Anything you'd want to highlight in your report? Okay. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, DPW, we've got Scott here. Anything you'd like to highlight that uh, needs to be pointed out in your report? Okay, thank you. Uh, Captain Ensfield is here from Elgin County. Sheriff, anything you'd like to share? Okay, very, no, very good, thank you. I don't believe John Moxie mm -hmm. is on the line, so we will just take his report. Um, that takes us to item B, which is boards, commissions, and committees. Uh, Fire District Administrative Board, we do have Dan Fox here. Dan, would you like to uh, share some highlights? Oh, very good. These are Dan mm -hmm. Fox, uh, City of Saugatuck. Um, these are highlights from the January 16th Fire Board meeting. As you know, sometimes we're right ahead of your meetings and sometimes we're behind, but this one we're ahead. Um, the key parts related to the chief uh, briefing the board on the year-end statistics for the fire district. I'll top line those for you. Calls overall, which you knew from last time, are, were at a record for the year, 1,023 1, calls in all. Those break out roughly, roughly in accordance with the the populations of 44% Township, 29% Douglas, 27% Saugatuck. 64% um, of the total of the, of the 1,023 total were EMS, uh, EMS calls with 26% of that 64%, so roughly a third, um, less than a third, of those calls being false, which is the number one call the fire district responds to. Uh, seniors particular, whatever. Uh, cost recovery over the year, the district sought $61,165 in cost recovery. So for example, when response out on the interstate or whatever, you know, some truck driver drives off and causes a, a demand for the district's resources, we build back at a prescribed rate insurance companies or whatever. We, so anyway, we sought $61,000, received so far 26,000 of that. Uh, so there's 29,000 outstanding. Sadly, because so many of the, so many of these relate to incidents on the interstate involving trucks and whatever, or out of towners or whatever, people are perfectly happy to accept fire district's help out there. But when they get back home, they kind of forget about it and don't think they owe anything. And so, we get stiff. The fire board talked about ways to try and dial that up. For example, uh, in the case of a truck trucking incident, to not just appeal to the, the owners of the trucking company, but to go to the trucking association, any state body from wherever their state is, to try and raise the heat to increase our return. Total motor vehicle accidents for the year 66, notably of of that 66, there were none, was none, were none, at, <laughs> at uh, Old Allegan and Blue Star, mm -hmm. which is a real tribute to the township that invested in stoplights that flash and an overhead light that they just replaced again this week um, so that you notice that. There is talk in the township about possible roundabout potentially there and also up at 64. Out of, kind of out of school. Um, the the chief has said uh, as the on the motor vehicle incidents, the chief has said more than once that he would prefer to have to go to ten house fires versus one call on the interstate because it is so dangerous out there. At the at the appreciation dinner on Saturday night, sat with among others Eric Sturm who was now retired out of the fire district, a firefighter. And he told, he was telling us how out on the interstate, you learn to walk backwards, to get back to your truck with all the lights flashed and all the rest of it, you walk backwards because you because the idiots on the road are texting or sleeping or whatever they're doing, but it's very dangerous. A police chief or a fire chief from Kalamazoo was killed not long ago in an incident like that, not that long ago. Grants and donations during the year, almost $100,000. Uh, 
99,572. The district's average response time on those, it dropped a little bit. So it's just a little bit under, under six minutes. Um, we also were given and briefly reviewed the financial statements for 2022. So thank you. Provide a little <laughs> gift from the fire district with our compliments. Um, the uh, EMS, what I would call working group, has had their first meeting. Um, and uh, the first meeting was with the uh, medical professionals, the five or six medical professionals, doctors and what, whatnot, discussing all sorts of things, a wide ranging discussion. Well, I'm not part of that group, but uh, one of the things somebody mentioned to me afterwards was that in emergency medical situations, serious emergency medical situations, the doctors favor speed over necessarily the professional uh, ambulance because that ambulance you're going to wait for. So it's a, if it's a serious injury, head injury or something like that, they were arguing or not arguing, but they were saying, we need to get that person in front of us in the emergency room as quickly as possible. And so if the ambulance is relatively convenient, fine. If it's not, put them in a car and go, put them in a police car and go, whatever they do. So um, that uh, study group is also looking at, this may sound pretty basic, it is, I think it is pretty basic, the legal and jurisdictional responsibilities for EMS. Those responsibilities don't necessarily mean me logically vest in the fire district, but they but they're not, they're not vested in the fire district. That's not, that's not a chartered responsibility of the fire district. And so we're gonna to get to the bottom of that because that legal basis for who's providing what, particularly in the event of something catastrophic happening, something bad happening, some failure of one kind or another, lawyers will sue everyone. So we need agreements so that we know who's exactly responsible for what, including reviewing fees and so on and so forth. As I've said before, it's more it's important because most of the people, I'm sure most of the citizens of Saugatuck and Township as well, think that this is part of the deal, that the fire district runs ambulances. We do not. We're not authorized to do that. So if we're going to move in that direction, which we may, there'll be a sound jurisdictional basis, legal basis for it. Um, uh, as to a couple of questions that came up here in the last meeting regarding the, uh, the uh, meetings of that, what as I'll say, working group or whatever. Uh, those are not public meetings. Those are the equivalent of the study group meetings you guys have on uh, like the park and, parks and public works thing where it's, it's it's a provider of sort of focused input, no decisions. We anticipate, I certainly anticipate in the fire board, looking at multiple potential ways of solving this issue before we get out. So that's that. Um, planning is underway uh, for the open house at the fire department that I've corresponded with you about once, during sometime during February, for all three jurisdictions, uh, uh, officials, Managers, council members uh, at the fire department. Um, having said that, I know the chief was was very pleased that you, Mayor, Mayor Dean and Council Persons Lewis, I'm sorry, Baldwin and Muncie came to the fire district for an hour and a half, and Ryan Cummins came to the fire district and spent an hour and a half or whatever it was there. They very much appreciated that. Uh, and finally, the the appreciation dinner that I referenced earlier was Saturday night at the Saugatuck, Saugatuck Yacht Club. Delightful, truly a delightful event. And, and we were going to show you tonight a video not related to the event so much, but it related to the services. But we're going to have that video for you at the next meeting. It's when you see what those people do, quote unquote, for a living or for pay. There's, you can't pay, there's not enough to pay me to do that. I mean, that's, 
that's the real deal. So any questions at all? Any questions for Dan? Um, I, I have a question. I hope you guys had a good time Saturday night. Um, yeah. And I hope the flowers were pretty. Flowers were beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, I, I was flowers looking... were set in in. Uh, you know that what they were. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I made them with Jean, so that's why. I, that's you the, did the flowers, but I don't know if the you joke. did the vase. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, I wanted to um, ask you about. I was looking at the re, your report for the, on, that we find under statistics on your website for for this report right now, and I'm looking at the EMS calls between 2021. In 2022, and I'm seeing a big difference here of, of what we did in a year ago versus what we did in 2021. For example, right here, it's showing that we had 127 calls in 21, but this year, is that right? Only 12 calls for falls? I doubt I'd, I'd have to look and ask them that question. Okay. Because in, in a lot of these numbers are down from the year before. That's why I asked, for example, the um, uh, where it says sick person, you had 88 calls, but this year only four. So that, that's what I was asking. Was it was there that much of a, a, a decrease of EMS calls from 2000? I'm certain not. Okay. Um, whether that relate, and it could relate to a number of things, but that may relate to, there are other charts in that long book right. that relate to the, the, there's a new categoriz categorization of individual calls that have okay. broken a lot of things into pieces that need to be totaled to get, okay. to, get to quote, total EMS. Uh -huh. And that would be, that's my guess, but I'll ask uh, Eric okay. Kirchner. That's what I mean. As we're talking about, you know, that kind of service right now, you know, when I look at that graph, I'm like, wow, is it really that? I mean, all of these numbers, I could say several more as well that you can find on your website. Well, I could say they're, they're the drastic. Up. Yeah. Oh, I know Record calls are up. Yeah. Number and right. only, you know, only a small portion of those are fire related and EMS calls are the number one. I know that uh -huh. for a fact. Okay. Um, I just want to question, and I, I show, I'll show you, you know, that's the graph I'm looking at that's on your website for EMS calls between the two years, so. Yeah, well, like I say, unless unless I, I can go through there and look at it, I guarantee you there's 10 charts and okay. EMS calls, so. Right. I'm not a data expert. Right. For that stuff. That's but why I asked. Eric Kirk, I'm not either. That's that, why I asked. Yeah. Puts that report together. Okay. Thanks, Dan. I'll get you an answer. Thank, thank you, Gregory, for that. Uh, any other questions for the? I, I'd just the... like to add on top of that. That's I think getting that clarified would be very helpful because we're always told to refer to the web page. So if the information is not readily accessible, it's very hard for us to determine. We're an open appropriate. book on data. It's all there. Well, it's... we're an open book, and I, I, I meant to mention as well. At the end of this, uh, again, it reiterate from last time, any operational questions related to the fire district, please, we're happy to answer them. The sooner, the better. The closer we get to the end of the year, the more difficult it becomes to devote the time it takes to answer those. We're happy to do it. Great. Thank you, Dan. Sure. Thank, Thank you. you. That takes us to... Um... That takes us to, to your beat, uh, Gregory, the uh, Interurban Board. Anything to share? Um, we just turned in. I, I gave a copy to our clerk for our uh, annual grant for the MDOT. That's the big meat in our pie. You know, it costs about 12 to $13 to ship somebody or to pick someone up and take them where they go, even though they only pay about a dollar. So most of our funding is through federal. And uh, uh, Phyllis Eif, uh takes her time writing these grants and she brings them around the board and gives us all time to look through them before we push them through. So I wanna give uh, Phyllis Eif a shout out as well. We've also got another propane bus, which should be delivered sometime this year that's in the works of being built. That'll be our third propane bus that's on the road. And uh, those have uh, treated us quite well. Um, and uh, we've got the propane tank that we had installed about a year ago there at the office and uh yeah and urban's doing quite well great thank you gregory um we have hal lake sewer and water authority next on the agenda barry um thank you for being here thank you mr mayor barry johnson saugatuck citizen chairman of the cal lake board uh first of all i want to thank you folks that came to the uh orientation uh on the 11th i think it was 
Uh, really great to stick your toe in the water, pun intended, uh, about what's going on. It's one of our essential services. So we had two meetings this month already because it's budget time, and that's what you guys do. We all do it. And uh, so the first meeting was on the 11th, and uh, we submitted our monthly uh, water report without issue, submitted our wastewater treatment, daily monitoring, daily monitoring without issue. Um, on 12-16 and 12-19, uh, the city's engineers and St. Peter's attempting to resolve an unidentified connection to the water main. Uh, when they built that church, there wasn't even that road down there. And so you just keep finding where things are. And uh, we hydro-excavated it with the new Vector. You guys know what that is. Uh, and got that fixed. Of course, we all remember the blizzard over Christmas. And we spent the 20 and 21st preparing for forecasted 50 mile an hour winds. We experienced no power outages. And uh, we did get two call-ins from some frozen interior pipes. So for some uh, frozen residential. And of course that's, they're responsible. We don't go into houses. Uh, after the blizzard, uh, we noticed a leak. There was a puddle up on Campbell Road mm. uh, on the Douglas side. Uh, as a po possible water system leak. And in fact, we did. And when you put these new pipes together, it's all new up there. They have what they call a slip joint. And uh, you slip the next pipe in the other. Uh, there was a failed slip joint. And uh, we were on that job from 8.30 in the morning to 10 o'clock at night. And uh, we had to post a boil water advisory for uh, five properties that were impacted and then everything cleared. Uh, Working on the clarifiers there, guys, you know where the clarifiers are. We went out and kicked the tires outside on those. Uh, the iron removal plant in Douglas was taken out of service for its uh, yearly maintenance. So we've got that uh, well shut down until the work's done on that. Um, let's see what else. Worked on the budget. Um, and, you know, we're finding things that you guys, Ryan, you're certainly finding our uh, priority health is increasing 10.85%. Uh, uh, of course, the COLA is 8.7%. The cost of living increases. So we're all experiencing that. So uh, we've introduced those uh, increases into our budget, uh, both for uh, wages and benefits and, and all that. Um, so we did our draft preliminary budget and everything's up 10 percent our it work so we worked on that then we had another meeting on the uh let's see way down here in the bottom on january 18th and we had our budget public hearing at that and uh didn't have anybody there but we have it um and we're looking at the Inflation is roughly reflecting a 10% increase in all materials, services, and labor uh, coming up. And as a result of those dynamic influences, it remains necessary to recommend a rate increase for the water base fees of $1.03 per meter equivalent, along with a 15 cent increase per 1,000 gallons of water. Uh, these aren't big things, but they are increases that people are going to see in their bills uh, once we pass the budget uh, at our next meeting. Uh, so we're we're recommending, and we have not passed this yet, so there's still time to come to a meeting, a uh, rate increase for sewer base fees of 55 cents per meter equivalent per month and a 5 cent increase per 1,000 gallons of water. So, so you'll be seeing that on your... Uh, Water bill starting probably in March. And then uh, we also did a full review of our fund reserves. Uh, all entities have to have fund reserves. Uh, the city does for improvements and your road work and everything we do too. Uh, so we have a very good foundation, uh, have a healthy uh, reserve for our uh, capital improvement plans. Unknown things are gonna happen like we're in a hole till you know for 12 hours and uh so we're working on updating our capital improvement plan and i will be our next meetings on the 13th because we move that away from president's day 
Normally we're the third, so if anyone wants to come, it'll be on February 13th, which is the same day as the meeting here. So I'll probably show up and give you our report from that, and then you won't see me again until next month. Sigh of relief. Any questions? <laughs> Any, please go ahead, Garn. Uh, Barry, are are folks going to get a uh, a notice of those increases, those fee increases, and how are they going to receive those? Uh, that'll be uh, certainly in the commercial record okay. uh, on our website, but nobody goes to the website. But uh, it'll be in the commercial record. Will they perhaps via email? Like I get my bill through email. I mean, is it? Uh, you know, I said, I, yeah, he discussed that. I forgot if we we're going to do the emails or not. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. Otherwise, I can imagine y'all will be inundated with calls. Why are my rates up? Yeah, I mean, it's probably going to end up being less than ten bucks a month. But that's yeah, ten bucks a month. Some folks, yeah, that, yeah, that may cause a little bit of a. Yeah, good question, Garnett. Thank you. Um, anybody else? Anything else for Barry? Mr. Mayor. Thank you. If I, oh, of course. Yeah. Right. If, if oh, I yeah. Can. Does the town township of Sagatog have a infrastructure replacement line item on their bill? <laughs> Uh, meaning that they're planning for a replacement of their hard infrastructure. And when would be the right time for the city? Well, I'll stop there. Well, the township, I can't speak for the township. No, I'm saying so, for Cal Lake Sewer and Water on your bill, do they have a line item on there for replacing their pipeline? Capital improvements. Capital yes. improvements. Yes, yes yeah, they we do. do have a line item for capital improvements. Uh, yep. And uh, as far as you know, does the city have the same? The city of Saugatuck? Yes. Uh, let me, I'll look at your budget with you. So you should. So okay. when would be the right time to for the city to start introducing that conversation? Um, if you're getting ready to do a, 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 an increase, would this be a, a good time to do that? Yeah. I mean, you know, Daryl can, Darryl can probably give you some recommendations, but, you know, you guys own all the pipes under the ground. So as you do your, you know, research, uh there is a you know uh gis for the sewer and water system but not for your storm sewers because that's resident who was paid for uh, by the cal lake um so you've got a lot more going on than just sewer and water you got all the other infrastructure but uh i would think the city should now for years when there was uh sewer hookups that money would be paid to cal lake and they would put that in a reserve account for such purposes. But it became kind of crazy for us to manage your money. So we refunded all those accounts to the cities. And uh, I'm assuming somewhere in your accounting, you have where all your sewer hookups and all that money goes, and that would be used exactly for that kind of thing. Now, you may want to increase that budget as you look around at, the, at your infrastructure, and say, you know what, uh, we're tearing up the street. We know that's really old pipe. We better put a contingency in there if we get down there and it's clay tile or something. <clears throat> Does that answer your question? Kind of. Um, and I'll talk to Daryl about this, but just to be clear with the city council, the city has not set money aside through Cal Lake Sewer and Water vis-a-vis -vis their billing to replace the no. infrastructure that they own. We do for what we own. We don't for what you own. Right. Right. That's the point. Um, the township does. Um, so that should be. So, I mean, I think this is important for the city council to have a, 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 a thoughtful discussion on um, mm -hmm. before they get to their their final billing. Um, yeah. As there's no no surprises. So that yeah, may... we, we wouldn't put on our bill your reserves for your infrastructure. Okay. And we already have it in our budget, if you want to look at for town, but the township does, right? They have like an in bill. incremental cost for infrastructure. And I can, again, they may put you on the spot. They, they, they made it. It's a really good idea. Um, they do. Okay. So they have an infra, incremental bill tax <laughs> that they use for their infrastructure improvements. Since now we know that we own all the pipes underground so okay. yeah and, think and, about that and we should work on that very quickly if they're getting ready to send out an increase so uh, they should add that how would you like to handle that would you like that would you like to handle that as a, as a workshop you like to do it offline or, or handle it through a workshop that first with daryl um, okay. yeah, just on the staff and, level but i just want to make the city council aware okay. the fact that you own the infrastructure yes. however you have not been setting money aside to right. replace it mm -hmm. and we don't know that's a cost you're right and so mm -hmm. we should start doing that and if there's going to be an increase 
that should be part of the conversation. Okay. Mm -hmm. and that, and that's really forward thinking, Ryan, and that's really good thinking. Mm -hmm. uh, because when the Cal Lake refunded all the money that was from the sewer hookups to the city, you could have burned through that already. Oh, know? yeah. So I, yeah. I don't mind the idea after you have the the, the sidebar conversation with your counterparts. If, if we workshop this as a group and get a better handle on it. So I'd, I'd be happy, wanna, I'd be happy with that at a future. Want to make a future workshop? Yeah, I and, think this is good timing. So there's no late surprises. Yeah, and, I agree. No surprises. Yeah. Absolutely. So thank That's you. That's great. Good forward thinking. Thanks, thank Barry. you, Barry. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Barry. Thank you. Uh, I do not believe uh, we've got Harbor Authority, um, ZBA. I don't believe we have anything from ZBA. Um, anything from historic? Uh, mm -hmm. We met, we had a meeting on the 5th of January, and we had okay. one item, which is in the packet under Ryan Cummins' report, which I appreciate so much, your wonderful reports. Um, the 647 Butler, and the poor guy didn't really know what he was getting in for. <laughs> so I think he's coming back in February for the February 2nd meeting. Right. That's it. Great. We're at. Um, planning Commission... Yeah, we met this past Thursday. We had two applications, one which was pulled just before the meeting began. Uh, one was the land division up on Maple Street, which um, really much appreciated the fact that the owners of the property were at the meeting and we talked through things and they ultimately are going to be deciding. I'm not sure where, what direction they're going to go on that land division, but the planning commission gave the feedback in terms of the approach that we thought they should take. Um, I'll talk a little bit about the short-term rental discussion because we had about a 30, 45 minute discussion around the short-term rental. Do you want to put uh, that into six? Sorry, yes. I didn't mean to interrupt, but do you want to just maybe highlight that for 16? Uh, yes. Okay, great. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. Um, uh, Helen, Parks and Public Works? Parks and Public Works. Our first meeting of the year is tomorrow morning, 10 a.m. Anyone's welcome to join us. Study groups are well underway. I had the privilege of attending, a, I think, two of those the last week. And um, we're getting a lot of robust discussion. Looking forward to the to the uh, to the uh, continuation of that. Great, thank you, Helen. Um, Holly, anything tri community non motorized? Uh, we'll be meeting this week to discuss next steps and um, concrete um, uh, steps that we need to take with the engineer. And just so uh, all three municipalities are sort of pointed in the right direction, coordinated. Um, and everybody kind of knows what their role is. So great. We're happily moving forward. Excellent. Great to hear, Holly. Um, Darren, anything try community? Uh, well, that group basically its purview ended in December of last year. Okay. So it has folded. Um, but uh, there's an effort afoot of some of the folks to continue in conjunction with Rotary another household hazardous waste day. Oh, um, so stay tuned for that. Um, Dr. Smaller might mention it in addition to Venetian if he wants to under his rotary Venetian report. Right. Can we still look to you for sort of a, a yes, just a, a weather eye on that? Appreciate, yeah. appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, that takes care of 10B. Uh, we do not have anything under 11 request for payment. Mm -hmm. uh, that takes us to item 12, approval of accounts payable. This is a roll call. Mm -hmm. um, I'll be looking for a motion to approve accounts payable in the amount of $1,013,583.20, which you'll find on page 23, and uh, accounts payable in the amount of $274,995.26 on page 32. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Yeah. Motion, Gardner. Second, second, Lewis. Great. Um, Jamie, uh, is there any discussion? <clears throat> I don't see any discussion. Uh, would the clerk please call the roll? Baldwin? Yes. Dean? Yes. Gardner? Yes. Leo? Yes. Lewis? Yes. Muncie? Yes. Stan? Yes. Approved. Thank you. Uh, we have no uh, introduction of ordinances. We have no public hearings. We have no unfinished business. Uh, 16, new business, uh, City Hall Exterior, recommendation of an award on page 34 of your packets. Uh, Ryan, can I turn this one over to you? What's Ryan? This Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, so you had a, a healthy discussion at your workshop. Um, you, you covered this topic. Mr. Mayor, if you want to kind of go back over some of the highlights, that's that's up to you. Um RC Ryan Cummins is here to speak to this item, and we also have our engineer, Mr. Gibbs, uh, on the call or online here to talk about it as well. Uh, a couple of things that came out of that workshop was to make sure this wasn't going to be a, like a runaway cost, yeah. right? So yeah. we had our exterior repair um, bid, and there was a contingency that we talked about, right. and uh, RC and I 
uh, talked about the fact that we should cap that. Uh, engineer feels very comfortable that um, we should just have a $50,000 contingency. If it should exceed that for any reason, we would come back to council for additional approval. Um, but given the fact that we have some lead abatement issues that we have to deal with, we just kind of you don't really know what you're getting into until you get into it, but we would, we, we would return to council if, if it should exceed that uh, contingency that we're recommending. Okay. Uh, outside of that, we talked about timeline, right? We didn't want this project going like throughout the summer. Right. Uh, and so my understanding is that the, uh, the contractor would get in early April um, and it would take about two months mm -hmm. um, to, to complete the, mm -hmm. complete the project. But yeah. RC can speak more, much more intelligently than I can on this one. So RC, if you well, if maybe you have I, additional comments, I may have aired. I perhaps should have um, put the sample motion out there for just well, it's okay uh, for uh, staff to just give a okay. A, go a, ahead, go ahead, RC. But, yeah, sure. Yeah. Just staff presentation, basically. Okay, fine. Yeah. Good evening, Mayor and, and City Council members. Uh, yeah, the City Manager did a good job cutting, getting you back up to speed and where we're at. Um, I think the other question that that council had after the workshop was kind of where the money's going to come from. And so I talked with our uh, treasurer. Um, he's indicated that uh, out of the general fund, you have a city hall department um, and you had set aside uh, 202,000, I'm sorry, 200, uh, yeah, $202,000 um, in the uh, maintenance um, of city hall line item. So um, this would fall under that. And so there's there's room in that budget uh, that this would, would fall under. Um, you know, the budget indicated originally that that would be, you know, exterior repairs as well as maybe some internal work. Obviously, we were not to the point of even accepting bids on internal work and, and given the cost of things, uh, we'll have to maybe, you know, push that off to some future years. But you do have money in your budget that's already appropriated. Fine. Right. Um, there is a sample motion yeah. before us. Mr. Here. Mayor, Go I'd ahead. like to make a motion to approve the bid for City Hall exterior repairs and restoration from Painting Services of West Michigan in the amount of $133,479.95 and a contingency not to exceed $50,000 without returning to council for a total of $183,479.95 from the City Hall Maintenance and Repair General Fund contract to be executed by the mayor or Mayor <clears throat> Pro Tem. Second. All right. We have a motion. Muncie seconded by Stanton. Is there any further council discussion on this? We workshopped it pretty heavily uh, last week, but I'm open to any more discussion. Go ahead, Russ. Yeah, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Um, I would suggest that we add something to the motion that we say the bid for City Hall and information booth, because that was discussed at the workshop on Wednesday, is that the work's going to include the information booth. I think it's important for folks to know that that's included. Correct. That. I would suggest an, an amendment to the motion to include information. Please. Would you like to amend your yes, motion? Yes, I'd like to amend the, uh, my motion to include the uh, restoration of the and the uh, painting of the information booth. Thank you. Um, I, second. I just, and we, and we have a second. Stand, second. Second from Stan. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. I'd also mention that there was some discussion for those of you that were not at the workshop that the name in the building will remain Sagatuck Village Hall. There's been some discussion about changing the name, but that's going to remain as it is. Um, also, too, is I want to commend Scott and his staff. I understand that they're going to be re reconstructing the flower boxes on the on, on City Hall. So I want to thank them for that. It will be really, really nice. I'm excited about this. This is great. Great. Any further discussion among the council? Uh, Mayor, if I may, I just go ahead. Gardner. I would just like to say that you know, even before I joined council, this was a topic, and Barry Johnson might remember long long topic when we were ever going to get around to doing this and it's nice to see it finally happening i've been in town eight years so it's nice to see it happening so thank you both very much great uh anything anything further from council jamie do you want a a roll call for this okay um uh, anything else then i think we're ready to take a roll call Alden? yes B. yes gardner yes leo yes lewis yes Muncie? Yes. Stanton? Yes. Right. Motion carries. We are now at 16B, Historic District Commission appointment. This will be a voice vote. It's on 63. And uh, once again, another item that we workshopped, uh, we discussed at the workshop last week. So 
with that, I'll entertain a motion and then we can have a little discussion if need be. Mayor, if go I ahead, may. Gar go ahead, Gar Motion to appoint William Donahue II to the Historic District Commission with a term ending August the 1st, 2025. I'll second. <clears throat> motion Lewis, second Muncie. Um, any further council discussion needed on this one? Mr. Brown, I would just say I want to thank Rosemary Johnson for applying as well. It's it's a real blessing to have really great candidates for our commissions and boards, and I appreciate the reproach and transparency on this. Thank you. Yeah, and I'll just I'll just reiterate. Um, it was a very hard decision. Uh, I, I don't mean to speak for Chairman Straker, but I, I I think he'll agree it was a difficult decision to make, and I certainly hope Rosemary will continue to uh, consider other opportunities as they may uh, as they may. Um, materialize uh, she'd be very much an asset to to helping us with some of our boards and commissions so um if there's no further discussion um is this this is a this is a voice vote mm -hmm. so um would all in favor please say yes yes yes, yes. yes. any opposed motion carries appointment is made uh item c we have the short-term rental discussion once again something that we discussed a workshop on wednesday and then it was a topic of discussion at the planning commission uh with that um russ i would welcome any comments you might have on that sure um we had a long discussion about short-term rentals but more importantly our discussion was focused on what is the next step in the process and uh, the planning commission will be holding a special meeting on thursday february dates right here um we will be meeting on thursday february 2nd excuse me groundhog day um with the express purpose of uh completing and drafting a resolution for council underneath 4.28 of the city charter to establish a temporary committee work group ad hoc task force whatever the official name is going to be with some very specific um goals and also membership for that for that group for council to discuss at its workshop on February 8th. Um, so dates will be in there as well as duration and so forth and specifics regarding the membership. The potential membership of this task force is gonna be about 11 and we've used some different examples from across the country that have done similar types of work. Uh, we'll include members of the uh, city council planning commission, business owner community, uh, short-term rental property management group, uh, folks from different zones within the city itself as well as people that are residents but are not necessarily short-term rental owners or bed and breakfast owners. So pretty good mix. Again, council will have an opportunity to review that in the resolution as well. Great. Uh, any further discussion on this? Any... Mr. Mayor, if I may? Oh, please, Helen. So as I understand it, what we're going to do is create another committee to address an issue that already squarely falls within the responsibilities of the Planning Commission and City Council. The proposed structure would exclude participation by the vast majority of City Council and Planning Commission and our city is able to put together ordinances. We put together a floating home ordinance in a matter of months without needing a special committee. We handle other business of equal importance using tools such as citizen surveys, public comment and legal advice. In some cases, we actually solicit public comment through meetings and citizen forums like we are doing with the Parks and Public Works Committee. So we can take into account a variety of viewpoints before creating policy. These tools are available to us and could be used now within the purview of either the Planning Commission or City Council. Instead, we are simply adding months of delay and another layer of bureaucracy for an issue of paramount importance to the community. Thank you. Thank you, Helen. Uh, any further council uh, discussion on this item? Um, just, Mayor, real quickly, I listened in on the Michigan Municipal League um, today and actually posed the question of where, where if any, short-term rental legislation might be, and the legislature has not even gotten that far. They're still within their first um, weeks of learning where the bathrooms are for many of them. I mean, half, half of the reps, state reps are new, 55 of them. Mm. So it will be a while before we see or any munis municipality sees any kind of movement on short-term rental related legislation. So I, I understand where council member Paul Baldwin is coming from, um, but in a way uh, our hands are a bit tied um, based on a lack of movement um, on the state level. It's very difficult, and it, it really places municipalities in quite a bind um, because that is the ultimate authority um, related to this issue. Uh, so it's, it's, um, it's going to be a thorny topic um, and something that won't be able to be 
rectified or resolved quickly, unfortunately. And I, I recognize that it's been an issue and a concern for many of our constituents. Um, totally recognize that. Um, but it is uh, it is going to take a while. It, it, and I know, I know it's frustrating for you um, and it's frustrating for a lot of our constituents, but um, it, it has been frustrating even on a broader, more global level from the state because of a lack of any kind of resolution on their end. So um, I think we can anticipate that it will come up again and it may look similar to what they were trying to get to at the end of December, which was a state directory. So that if you're a short-term rental owner, you were basically put in a directory so that you could be called when there was an issue with your particular property, um, rather than placing it upon the next door neighbors to either call the police or file a complaint or something like that. But um, without going on too long, it it is um, not on their immediate docket. So, um, which really puts all of us, not just Saugatuck, really in a bit of a bind, so. I, Mayor, I wanted to kind of echo what um, what Carnet said uh, with uh, with making sure that we're taking the time to do what we're doing, and also give a little bit of um, uh, uh, credit to our planning commission and thanking you for taking on this role. Um, we've seen some of these things happen already. Like I talked in our workshop, that New Buffalo has uh, has uh, created some ordinances and now their city is seeing a few lawsuits right now. So I think that, you know, so it is a conversation that has to happen. I know that a lot of people have passion for it. And I really do understand it. And, uh, and uh, but uh, I, again, like Garnet and, uh, and like Russ, um, this is something that's gonna have to be thought out. And uh, it is gonna take probably a little bit more time than, coming up with a resolution or something by this spring or before this season. I, I'm afraid it would, it might take a little bit more time than that. And, okay. and it's not kicking the can down the road. Um, it's just making sure we're doing the right things. I hate to see another lawsuit. Yeah, I would, I would add to uh, council member Baldwin's comments. The, 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 this is going to take a little bit of time to get through this from the community standpoint. And more importantly is what I suggested to the planning commission, which was direct response from your workshop comments was if there's ideas that are generated, as we look at what the problem really is, there can be some short term changes made to address some of those issues. The longer term play here is to figure out what makes sense for the citizens of Saugatuck and the community of Saugatuck. There's a lot of different ways solutions can go, but the first thing that I envision that this is going to accomplish is identify what the real problems are, and that could generate some short-term solutions. I, I I do understand and accept that, and I do hope that in our in the interim that we have that we start enforcing some of the policies that we do have, because I think that we do not do a, a very good job of enforcing some of the policies that we have, keeping it off of the people that live next door to report problems. We've got to we've got to beef up the things that we're able to do without having an ordinance. And we need to do that with alacrity. Great. Thank you. Um, Holly, Lauren, any? The only thing that I would add is at least with an ad hoc committee or some sort of committee within planning, um, they're laser focused on short term rentals. Mm -hmm. um, planning Commission has a lot on your plate. We, of course, have a lot of things on our plate. And maybe at least by having an ad hoc committee of sorts, they can be laser focused on the issue and maybe we'll get things done in a more urgent way. I'm hoping, I'm just hopeful. And um, I would just say that uh, Russ and I had a conversation at our last meeting about um, trying to find an approach that uh, sort of uh, split down the middle, um, which what Russ was referring to, which is there's some low hanging fruit. Mm -hmm. And also what you said, there's plenty of uh, rules on the books that we can enforce. I think there's things that we can do now. And I think the community would like to see us do something now. And so um, I think that's really important important that we not have sort of a study committee that comes back in a year but right you know if there's something that we can put on the website if there's a way that we can identify certain um uh codes on the books or you know just be looking at what other communities are doing and skipping the lawsuit because <laughs> right it's it's a delicate maneuver but it must be done and and everybody realizes that. So yeah, yeah. and I, I I 
fully endorse that we should be looking at our existing ordinances and look at any short-term mitigations we can do to to address some of the unintended consequences uh, you know of, of this and um I, I have spoken to the chair of planning and, and i've i've given him my commitment uh, that this council will work very hard to expedite this as much as we can yeah. um, we, we will not be a barrier to getting things done uh, we, we will work very hard in partnership with our planning commissioners to to move this as expeditiously as possible so uh, go ahead, Gregory. And I just wanted to make a mention that, you know, we are careful and in, in to consult with, and I hope that I, I know that the Planning Commission, I believe, is going to reach out to some of the stakeholders and uh, know that, um, you know, some of the folks that we thrive, you know, this is our business. We're a tourist town. So, of course, you know, without rentals, we wouldn't have stores or restaurants or anything else that supports our tourist town. So this is something that we're really going to take care of and that we're looking out for folks that are in the industry that are in the rental business, like several of us are. So if I may, I would like to add that I am not at all opposed to short term rentals. I think we need a fence around our playground. Right. Thank you. I th thank you, everyone, for for your for your candor on this subject. It's 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 you know it has been identified as a top priority among among the voters, and it's it's come out loud and clear in our strategic planning surveys that this is something that we do need to be putting a lot of rigor and and discipline around and 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 to move quickly. So I appreciate all of your um, engagement on this subject. Uh, with that, I. Mark Smaller, thank you for, uh, for, 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 for staying with us. <laughs> Item 16D is the Venetian Festival discussion. Uh, as, as I think everyone knows, just to set the stage, uh, Cow Hill is ready to pass the torch from this very, very popular, very important event. And uh, the Rotary has, I think, done a lot of important deliberative work among their membership on it. And so with that, I will turn it over to you, sir. Thank you. Uh, Mark Smaller, president of Saugatuck Douglas Rotary. Thank you for allowing me to speak under new business. Um, I got so anxious seeing that clock with, with, with three minutes. <laughs> Anyone who knows me that would know that might be difficult for me, but I am going to be brief. Just to say, um, it came to our attention that uh, Cow Hill was no longer able to organize um, this really popular village event, um, area event, and um, we took a survey of our membership. We are not a large group. Um, I think at the time we did the survey, we had 38 people, but 80% return rate. The board took it up and unanimously approved. Um, we were a little anxious. Um, what we're considering is we'd like to make this a long-term um, organizational uh, part of Rotary. We'll see how things go in this first year. Um, it fits in what the board really concluded is that it fits in with our three priorities, one of which is Mount Baldhead, which supports education, Girls and Boys Club, and we raised over $100,000 this past year. Um, that's a big event that happens in September. So we're going to need help doing this, but we already have you know, gotten some partnership offers, which we will take on, especially with regards to volunteers. Um, the, uh, one of our priorities is the environment and protecting it around here since it is a source of our tourism and such. Um, this event takes place on the river. And um, so we will be thinking about how to make it even more focused uh, in terms of the event. Um, not just a great party and a great band, a great 80s band, but some other innovations. We already have a committee. We're meeting formally. Um, Garnett and Kathy North are co-chairing the, co the committee. Um, one of our members who got us involved in this, who shall remain nameless, but his initials are Jim Sullivan. Um, yeah, uh, uh, my wife says, oh God, is that Jim calling again? Um, <laughs> But Jim has done what you know I had hoped to accomplish during my brief term as president this year. We are a very small club, but we have very big ambitions. And I think this fits into what we're trying to do. It's not only, I'd like to say, we're just doing this for the community. But in fact, we're also doing it for Rotary because we believe in what we do. And we are about this community. 
I'm glad to be here. This will not be my, this is my first council meeting to attend as a visitor. I will come back because there's so many things that you're talking about that, that Rotary is interested in supporting as well. Mm -hmm. So um, thank you. I'm open to any questions, but as we go along over the next couple of months, Cow Hill has given us a real important and detailed playbook about how to do this, which we will take advantage of, but I will come back and visit you and give you a three minute or less update on what's happening. Ah. Okay. <laughs> thank, thank you, Mark. You. Right. Uh, council, please. Uh, Mark, thank yes, you for being Russ. here this evening. Um, you know, Venetian Festival, as I said at the workshop or a previous meeting, was very organic when it first started. It was simply a lot of boat owners got together, including my dad and some other folks, and just decorated the boats and sailed around the harbor, right? And it's since grown into something a bit more, uh, a bit more everything. Um, and it's kind of ebbed and flowed over the years. Um, and the thing that I would encourage the Rotary to do is to make sure to engage Safe Harbor, Saugata Yacht Club, Saugata Gas Service, which is part of um, um, Safe Harbor, Sergeant Marine, Singapore Yacht Club. Those organizations over the years um, have always had some part of that because it's an area then, as you mentioned. And I think that would be, that would, in, in my experience, that's what always drove it were the, were the yacht clubs and the marinas. Um, you should be aware that every, one of those groups that you just mentioned have already been contacted nice. in terms of sponsorship, Excellent. including also a, a Freedom Boat Club that I belong to. Mm -hmm. um, there are a number of potential sponsors um, and we are taking that into the account. We want to really uh, you know, highlight what has been traditionally about the river mm -hmm. and not just you know, the party. And um, that's a, such a big part of our identity. We see it also as an opportunity to include Douglas and Fenville because um, they're part of this and um, uh, we've already gotten a positive response from them. And the fact that, uh, you know, the person, the co-chair of the committee, Kathy is on the board of Douglas. So we'll be working with them as well. So it will be a whole river event, just really expanding on what has traditionally been the event over the past, I don't know, since the sixties, I believe. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you. Yeah. Anything else from the council? I just want to say, Dr. Smaller, thank you to Rotary, to everyone involved for, mm -hmm. you know, basically raising your hand and saying, we'll do this. Yeah. Um, because it would be so disappointing if it didn't continue. And I know you guys are already working hard at getting sponsors and getting people involved. So thank you, Rotary, for all you do. Okay. Well, thank you. And thanks yeah. for the opportunity. Great. Okay. Doctor, once again, thank you for, for your organization's leadership on this event and 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 Garnet and and Helen, thank you for your involvement as Rotarians and Garnet. Thank you to you and Kathy for mm -hmm. for leading uh, you know uh, on this event. And I I have every confidence it's going to be bigger and better than ever. So thank you all. Great, right. thank, thank you. you. Uh, with that, we have completed new business. Uh, we are now at 17 public comment, uh, open forum, three minutes on any topic. Anyone in the audience? Barry, please. Barry Johnson uh, up on Main Street City, Saugatuck. I want to compliment you guys on this focus on the short-term rentals. I mean... I did this at that side a few times, and I didn't see that much action. I don't agree with everything I heard. I really agree with some things I heard, and how they kind of split the difference. And uh, stick on it as you guys really listened uh, during the voters' forum and to your people. And it's just thank you for being focused on this. Thank you. Thank you, Barry. Thank you, Barry. Um, I any anyone else with a burning desire to share public comment in the audience? Um, <laughs> Okay, no one's jumping out of their seats. Um, <laughs> any hands raised on the Zoom? I don't see any, Jamie, nothing. All right, I, I'm going to close our last public comment period. Item 18, uh, correspondence, uh, That nothing there. Uh, and 19, we have council comments. Uh, we'll go around the horn one more time. Um, Helen, do you mind if I start with you? No, not at all, but I'm all set. I've said everything I needed to say. Great. Tonight. Thank you. Uh, um, like I said uh, on Wednesday, thank you for the uh, the orientation. I want to thank you, Scott. What a great job you did there at the DPW, as well as the fire department. 
and uh, showing us, teaching us how you got that equipment, how you, how the operations work back there. The water department, that was a lot of fun as well. I, want, I just want to repeat that. That was a, a great opportunity, as well as meeting all of the city staff and really finding out what they do. Um, so I appreciate that. That was a week ago last Wednesday that we did that. And, uh, and then a couple of your council mem members uh, joined in uh, as well. We had fun at the water plant, didn't we? <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, also, uh, just want to let you know, I kind of kind of missing um, Bob Wood, who's at the Sagatuck Brewing Company tonight, talking about his visit, his five weeks in Ukraine, uh, volunteering and teaching at a u university there in Kiev. And he'll be going back. He was on our show at Sagatuck on Sunday at 92.7 The Van. And I also want to uh, remind everybody that the the wishbone um, over here is collecting food. Uh, they're running short on food for dogs and cats. And if anybody thinks about it, take a, a bag of food of uh, dog food or cat food over there or cat litter and drop it off over there at wishbone on Blue Star right next to the uh, uh, Lakeside Party Store, convenience store. So well, I can't really follow that. So <laughs> I'll have I'll have no comments. Okay. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to congratulate everyone who was involved in the 50th anniversary of the Title IX um, celebration that happened at Sagatuck High School. I know Garney played a big role in that. And, uh, you know, our girls varsity coach, Kevin Tringale, Sherry Austin, Liz Wilson, so many people put this together. And um, if you weren't a part of the event, it was I haven't been so proud to be a trailblazer um, <laughs> because that's what it was. It was a night about trailblazers in our community. Um, Kevin Tringale called some of the women that were honored that night, um, basically the um, Mount Rushmore of women's basketball <laughs> and athletics. Um, really cool human beings that live in our community um, that have a long history in uh, women's athletics. Um, and so anyways, they were honored and our high school girls had a chance to interview them. And uh, I think they learned so much and it was a really proud moment for our high school. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And uh, just to echo those comments, I was at the game taking tickets at the door. So I had the experience of everybody coming in and I've never seen that gym so full. So it was clearly a well attended event. I uh, just wanted to mention that I was able to probably the last person in line to attend the newly elected officials training virtually this past Saturday. Um, uh, which was great. It was great information. Got to see a bunch of people from around the state. Also, too, um, we're going to be tired of hearing about the National Register of Historic Places. <laughs> it's been on the news. It's been in the paper. So the media has just been wonderful about covering this event and uh, this recognition. Uh, we did talk last week with the group about probably having some type of uh, an event uh, sometime probably in early summer with uh, the State Historic Preservation Office the History Center, or some other people just to acknowledge this because it's a big thing. Um, so just kind of keep that on the radar. So details to come. Uh, I'm just gonna follow up a little bit on the Title IX. Um, I think uh, in addition to what, what Lauren said, um, what, what that event um, basically did for our community probably is still not known. We got so much wonderful, positive, um, recognition in the media, whether it was the Holland Sentinel or Wood TV, um, we, the collective we. Um, and even bigger than that was, I think, and Lauren, you said it, um, it wasn't just about um, educating those young women. It was how those young women then educated their friends on the young men's basketball team and other athletics, and how many of them never realized what had to happen in order for there to be parity in not just athletics, but academics. And then how that has in turn affected everything in professional life. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's just really neat to see how proud everyone is of that event, um, but even better to see the education that, and growth that has occurred in our young people which is really what it's all about. And, and with that, I, I would just like to say, you know, Garnet, thank you for the work you did behind the scenes to, to put that, help help the team put that event together. Russ and, and Lauren, it was wonderful to see you there at the event. I, I 
it really ple pleased me to see such good representation from the city council uh, at our high school. And uh, it was absolutely a wonderful event. And, you know, as, as a, as a dad with, with two girls in, in the system, it makes me really proud. So, so, so thank you to all of you that, that played a role in it. And, um, and with that, um, I think it takes us to the opportunity to entertain a motion to adjourn. Mm -hmm. So moved. Second. second. Motion Gardner, <laughs> second. <laughs> second Baldwin. All in favor, please say yes. 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 Meeting adjourned. We need a roll call. <laughs> Thank you.